Hey, how's it going? Hey, finally, I'm 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 here. That's good. <laughs> I've I've had a few. <laughs> great to be I've, talking to you, man. Yeah, and you. What, what a great channel. Fantastic. Thank you. you. You've got a lot lots of subscribers and and views, which is totally awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Well, yeah, I uh. I stumbled across your channel a few weeks ago. Uh, I can't remember which video it was. It might have been your uh, your Greg Ackle interview, and I'm like, oh, this guy's awesome. And uh, I kind of think of you as kind of like almost like the press of shoegaze, like a journalist, because you actually go to the spots and you interview people. So uh, great work you're doing. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Peace. Peace. <laughs> yeah i think yeah i think you might be right i think um i do like to document a lot of gigs and show the scene like how it is on on the ground like like get, actually get out there and not just rely on re rely on the groups on facebook and stuff i like to i like to go to the places just just to feel more a part of it i think yeah yeah i get that it's uh yeah you're quite fortunate uh to be in a location where well, actually, how far are you from shows typically? Um, well, um, I mean, I guess in the context of like the USA, you know, everywhere is quite close in the UK. It's quite a small country. So I'm never more than about, you know, two hours away from. But Bristol is my like nearest like big gigging place um, in, in Plymouth, which is like way down in like the southwest. It's uh it's kind of like very barren. It's like the Texas of of the UK. Like, <laughs> oh, right on. Yeah, like nothing really happens. You know, like like a dust bowl basically. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I go to Bristol quite a lot, which is like the nearest biggest city. And then sometimes I go, I go London, but like London is about three three hours away at least. Bit of a jaunt then. Sounds like yeah. Yeah. So you know. where, where about to you in the states? So I'm in Minnesota, which is kind of the Midwestern area. So yeah. I'm in a small town, smallish town, I guess, called Mankato. Uh, not a lot of people have heard of it. But uh, yeah, I'm about two hours away from Minneapolis. So um, hmm. if I ever want to see a show, that's where I go. So yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Pretty boring, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good though. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. kind of, uh, what, what, what would the nearest kind of big uh, gigging, gigging place be for you? Probably Minneapolis. Yeah. The Twin Cities is what we call it, which is Minneapolis and St. Paul. And so that's about that's a little northeast of me. Mm. Um yeah, what have I seen? Well, like, actually, uh, I I haven't seen much like shoegaze shows live yet, actually. So I'm seeing Slow Dive in June though. Um, so that'll be really cool. Really good. What's like yeah, the best show you've brilliant. seen? Um, it's hard to say because I think like every shoegaze dream pop band is good in their own right i think everybody brings something different to the table so you know in terms of like being really ethereal and like big wall of sound i would say probably slow dive and in terms of just raw loudness like like punk rocky loudness i would say like swerve driver oh you saw swerve driver that's so cool yeah man. they're so loud um they oh, did they did raise and mezcal head like back to back in one show like the the full albums did they really incredible show yeah <laughs> both that both albums man that's two yeah. iconic albums like <laughs> yeah. from front start to finish yeah yeah it was. yeah like yeah. two different sets you know they took like a break in the middle and then did the second the mezco headset wow oh that's good wow, wow your wow. money's worth you know yeah i hope they do that in the states i think they they did i think uh, sometime i think that they've played with failure as well which must have been quite good oh i bet that would be yeah yeah Cool. But that's probably like um, the Northeast seems to get most of the shows like Philadelphia and, uh, you know, it's like Washington, isn't it? New, New York. Yeah, yeah. Boston sometimes. A lot of those. You're right. Yeah, it's usually um, yeah, uh, think, Northeast or yeah, in, South. In the, in the middle of America isn't really that beneficial. No, not really. It yeah. normally happens on the coasts, doesn't it? Like New York and then like Oregon, California. It's normally on the coasts. Yeah, for the most part, you know, usually it goes that it'll be like four cities in California a band will tour in, and then usually like yeah. Seattle or Portland, which is all on the West Coast. They might do like one city in the Midwest, whether it be yeah. 
Minneapolis or Chicago and then mm. to the East Coast. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose, so I yeah, Ch- Chicago is not too far away from you. That's quite good. Yeah, I've been there quite a It must be a good music scene there, like with the with the jazz and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't explored yeah. it too much, but uh, yeah, I've heard it is that way. Oh, yeah, and of course, uh, Ariel are from Chicago. <laughs> right, that's and, right, they are. Uh, light foils as well. I really, I, 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 I really like light foils. Uh, they were on the Kashugay's playlist. Uh, okay, twenty really good twenty tens uh, shoegaze. Cool. So, yeah, not too old. I'll check them out then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah maybe we should um, uh, discuss what we're doing here. So, we ten albums. Um, I don't know who wants to go first or like what. How do you want to do this? Do you want to do like you say your first album and then be taking turns showing the different albums sure yeah uh how do you want me to show it though uh I'm trying to think yeah and uh, you could do like post editing maybe like maybe have oh the, there we go. the album flying in or something yeah i'll okay. put it like up here in the corner how's that <laughs> yeah yeah it's cool yeah okay well yeah yeah you want to go first yeah. or me uh y- 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 yeah I'll, t- I'll let you go first Okay, sounds good. Well, uh, so number 10, Tokyo Shoegazer, Moondiver. It's my number 10. I think what I like most about it, uh, it's a cat. You know, I love cats. He's got a guitar in the mouth. <laughs> a bit surreal in that aspect, in that way. Yeah, it has like the moons on it as well. Um, so, yeah, that's my number 10. Yeah, really awesome band. Yeah, yeah. I, I must say a, a disclaimer that um, I don't really know, like, from an arts perspective, I'm not, I don't really know all of, all of the terminology, like abstract and like what's cubism and what's uh, surrealism and impressionism. So you may, you know, you may have to bear with me, but I'm just kind of just, uh, just going to describe what I like about them. Like you, you just did basically. Yeah, okay, no so, worries at all. Um, my number one, I think it changed from my Instagram posts because annoyingly I don't like own um, like one or two of them. So um, everything in my top 10, I'm, I've got a copy of either on CD or vinyl. So, Oh, uh, cool, man. So number 10, Catherine Will Ferment from 1992. This is the band's debut album. Uh, they are from Great Yarmouth in East Anglia of England, which is quite a rare place for a band to come from. That's better. The, the, sorry, the lighting was... Uh, causing some bad reflections then but um yeah a great album you've got black metallic is probably the biggest hits and um the artwork i just i just love the black hole and like these kind of like space bars like flying around the outside like <laughs> it's quite it's strange i don't really know what what they are it's like they look like the lines and stuff that when you type on a keyboard you know like the um, the ones that attach words together, you know, the, the, the semicolon kind of thing or whatever it's called. Oh yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. What's the word for that again? I don't know either off the top of my head, but, <laughs> but <laughs> it yeah. almost looks like the, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no. Sorry. Yeah. You, you say something. No, I was just going to say it almost looks like the center of a flower or something like that, you know? Yeah. It can, be, it can be lots of something. things. It can be like the eye from like, lord of the rings and stuff the, the saruman's eye and all that stuff <laughs> but yeah i love the the space connotation is definitely like the first thing that uh hits my mind when i see this so yeah absolutely awesome cover cool right on all right well we'll uh i suppose we can go on to my next one here so number nine or my second one um is paranol after the magic um so awesome. yeah, as you can see with this album, yeah, it's a pretty recent album. I think it just uh, came out last year, and mm. lots yeah, of it's people pretty good have, album. Lots of people have raved about it. Oh yeah, yeah, for real, it's pretty highly rated. Yeah, um, but yeah, it kind of reminds me. I don't know whether when I look at it, I see like just a snowstorm and trees, and um, the, it gives kind of a nostalgic quality because you know growing up in. Uh, minnesota there's a lot of snow (laughs) so i just think there's something so beautiful about it um and that's just what i see in it maybe it's not snow could be a bright 
explosion or something like that. <laughs> cool, man. I think yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it's really good to have like a to have those nuances, the, uh, the the ambiguity to the artwork, so you can you can make lots of different interpretations, and it's good mm -hmm. that it resonates with you how you can relate it to your local town with the snow yeah. falling. I like that. There must be quite quite resonance. Yeah. So yeah, awesome stuff. Um, my, my number nine would be. Um, Today Forever um, by Ride. Um, I mean, unfortunately, it's got the, the signatures on there, which kind of, it may ruin it for some people, but... Uh, Makes always, it even better. Yeah, or you can just look this up on Google and just get a, a plain copy anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, well, this is a fantastic EP. I think we are including EPs. I did say in the description, it's going to be albums and EPs. So this this qualif this qualifies, and yeah, I obviously I love how it continues the water the ocean theme from their debut album Nowhere, um, which I think water kind of encapsulates the spirit of the genre, the best I think because it's like the power and the the powerful guitars and the overwhelming sound are like tidal waves. But there's also like a softness to it as well. Like on the surface, like water is like really soothing. But then at the same time, it's really powerful as well. So it's kind of, I think water encapsulates like all of the emotions and the the kind of tidal wave sonics of, of shoegaze. And I guess, I guess the shark is cool because like I said, maybe that shows like the the aggress the aggression of the kind of the loudness and stuff maybe the amplitude um i like that yeah but yeah I, you really it's, it's quite it's quite a uh ambiguous kind of artwork it's hard to figure out really it's got pr pretty cryptic uh but i guess the shark maybe shows the danger as well um the, maybe the energy maybe of, of loz's drumming maybe it kind of represents that like <laughs> yeah some kind of big yeah. energy <laughs> so yeah, yeah just the awesome cover really oh, awesome. i love that cover yeah no yeah i think you really hit the nail on the head when you're discussing how shoegaze is like water or being hit with waves because mm. you know i think that's the beauty of it is you know the instruments blend you're hit with a wall of sound or a wave of sound and so um yeah, and depending on which shoegaze band you're listening to, it could be small waves and more gentle, or it can be something much noisier like ride. So, yeah, I liked that analogy. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, we go into my next one here. I have uh, Catherine Wheel, Chrome. So we have another Catherine Wheel album here, and I really like Chrome. Yeah, there it is. You have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I may not I, have. I, I brought some along just to, uh, just to add to the graphics. Oh, awesome, I, I, lo I looked at your picks and uh, I actually picked them up next to me. Oh, good. Yeah. Thanks for doing that, man. I still have to get some of these, you know, because uh, I get most of mine on vinyl, and uh, it's a bit more expensive. So I my collection's been growing slowly but steadily. <laughs> but sure. um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So what I like about this album, there's like movement. Um. I just think there's something so beautiful about it. Um, and I guess it's back to that waves theme, you know. I think if there's two themes I've noticed among some of our picks, it's cats and water. <laughs> yeah. So Yeah, cats and water, yeah. Yeah. Not at the same time. Cats hate water, but <laughs> um yeah. but uh yeah, I think all I have to say about this one is like there's just something surreal about it floating something freeing or liberating there's like a, a sense of synergy to it as well with the bands being that close to each other and yeah i'm not quite sure what shape they're going to they're trying to make you know it looks very, very acrobatic what they're trying to do and like maybe trying to create a symbol it's really interesting either, cover uh, yeah i wonder how they fixed how they uh pictured that how they photographed that like i wonder did they have to actually go underwater or is it just effects? I have no idea. Yeah, super interesting. I'm not even sure if it is the band members. I don't think it is. It's probably just actors. 
Yeah. But uh, yeah, probably did some deep sea diving there. Or yeah, or, or it could be superimposed. It could be like green screen kind of stuff. But yeah. Who, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome pick, man. Was it? Ooh. Yeah. All right. So on to my uh, number eight. And <laughs> yet again, I think you just saw what it is. Yet again, we are dealing with water and cats, and this time we've got it in the same, the same album <laughs> cover. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter House Whirlpool from 1991, another debut album, and and there seems to be a real theme with with uh, my picks especially that they seem to be debut albums, like the debut albums seem to have the best artwork f for some reason. Yeah, you're right. It's like the, it's, that, it's like they want to make a big impact straight away. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah, it took me like. Uh, maybe a couple of years to actually realize what this was. Um, I thought it was some kind of like mothball kind of thing. Cause if you put it this way, I always thought like that was a leg and then that was a nose. And then like kind of, this was the head, this whole semicircle was the head. And these were the two eyes like where the, where the gaps are in the body. I thought they were two eyes. So <laughs> I've always really thought it was a totally different animal. Um, but yeah, then I found out it was a cat, I think probably from, I think it was like the shoegaze group on Facebook that had to point it out to me. <laughs> Pretty surreal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was hey. a big, big awakening when I, when I found out. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing actually happened to me where, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what it was either. I was actually in the same boat as you because, I mean, yeah, I didn't know. It was obviously some sort of animal with the fur. And uh, I actually looked it up on Reddit. I was like, what's on the Whirlpool cover? And Reddit was like, do you need glasses? It's a cat. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> I guess I'm the only person who <laughs> yeah. couldn't see it. <laughs> no. No, that's, yeah. that's, that's two of us that couldn't see it straight away then. <laughs> but yeah, if you look closely as well, there are like shimmers of water. I don't know if it's going to pick. I yeah, saw that. you might be able to see there. There's kind of like shimmery waves in the top corner, but like in a darker blue than the Nowhere album. Yeah, definitely like a, that. definitely like a, you know, like um, when it's night time and you're watching the sea. Yeah. And, uh, I, so I like that again, water and cats again, and uh, I, I don't know what it represents really. I guess, I guess it, it represents the coziness with the with the cats like huddled up like that. So like the coziness yeah. of the shoegaze sounds, the the fuzz represents the the coziness and water again just like a like another tidal wave um symbolism so yeah. yeah that's all i can come up with for that really but yeah amazing yeah i think you know and i think that's the beauty with covers it's like the first thing you see oftentimes you know i think we might choose music based on how the cover looks you know and yeah. uh yeah, 100%. yeah and it's yeah and uh, I think this next one I'm going to be talking about, I think the cover matches the music so well. And that's Swirly's Blonder Tongue Audio Baton, or The Swirly's, depending on what year it is. <laughs> um, yeah. Lots of writing and, uh, on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's chaotic. Yeah. It's uh, it's DIY. And uh, it's funny because when you, I think the first song on that album is just a 15 second uh, audio clip of, of duct tape being expanded, almost like, the whole there's just such a it's hard to explain this diy lo-fi quality of this album that i think um really meshes well with what the cover is trying to convey yeah i think yeah i agree with you there it is a very hectic um sonic youth influenced album yeah i do yeah. a lot of sonic influence and sonic youth influence i mean <laughs> and i think that's um <laughs> Sorry, I just got my words wrong there. Oh, you're good. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I just thought that, um, yeah, I, I've listened to it a few times. And I remember like Jeremy Parker being a standout track. And yeah. um, Pancake is another great one. And also I parked the car by the side of the road. I think oh, might, yeah. maybe that's the opening track. I might be wrong, but 
Maybe. I don't remember off the top of my head. That's one I actually have on vinyl. I should have pulled that out. But uh but there are like some weird samples that happen, like um before is it pancake or something? There's like a weird sample about uh someone saying like a like a really like inflammatory kind of thing, like offensive kind of thing before the song starts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, could be that one. Yeah, yeah. So it's saying like you suckers or something like that. One day I'm gonna come. For, <laughs> one day I'm gonna come for you suckers or something like that. <laughs> I might, might be, about that. It might be before Jeremy Parker, but you have to listen to it again. Oh, it's a song that goes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's like a real like Sonic Youth kind of um, riff. Yeah. Like that, something like that. <laughs> That's my best yeah, impression. Can... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you can definitely hear that influence with them. Um, yeah, I think what's interesting about Swirlies is they're one of the early American shoegazing groups, you know, well, while well, oh, yeah. it was mostly in the UK and uh, Ireland. So, yeah, pretty cool. Awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I feel I feel that they uh, they sound more American, I think, than British. Like I would yeah. say, somebody like uh, I don't, don't know if you heard this of oh, this band called Close Down, but uh, or, or oh, yeah. Ozean, Ozean as well. It's like Ocean yeah. with the Z. And oh yeah, yeah, they have much more of a slow dive, uh, ethereal uh, vibe going on. Yeah, where are they from? They're from America too, aren't they? Or are they? Are yeah, they from the UK? Yeah, Ozean are American because um, they were it's it's become quite big hasn't it this year i think it, they just released that uh that unreleased album it's coming on vinyl yeah and yeah through numero group awesome yeah they got some great songs like fall and scenic it really blew yeah. me away how just how beautiful those songs are yeah it has that impressionistic quality with the guitars that i really like a bit like shine by slow dive just mm -hmm. has uh I think it has that same beauty to it. A lot of their songs. It's a blissful. Yeah, blissful. Perfect. That's right. Yeah. All right, then I'm, I'm going to go with my next choice then. So am I on number seven, I think? Yeah. I think Four I'm, or seven. Yeah. I think I'm on seven. So again, this was one of your favorites as we discussed on Instagram before. Yep. Uh, Strange Free World by Kitchens of Distinction. For me, the most underrated shoegaze band of all time, probably. Yeah. I don't think they get enough love on the groups. And I think Julian Swales is an amazing guitar player and deserves a lot more attention than what he gets. Also, the singer, vocalist, uh, Patrick Fitzgerald, I think his lyrics are really interesting and he has a great voice. Um... And I, yeah, I just think he's got, he plays bass at the same time as singing and this, his bass lines are, are really great and carry, carry, they anchor the song down as Julian Swell's guitar turns into a tidal wave. I think his bass really helps to keep this, the songs grounded and keep like a melody going. And yeah. I just, again, this is water again, the sea, the raging sea. And I like how it's like quite kind of angular. If you look at the ends of the waves, you got there's like a sharp quality to them, like a like a like a demonic quality even. You know, yeah. it's like uh, it's like a the light and dark shade. You know, the the menace mixed with the smooth. I like uh, that. I like that. So the me there's a bit of menace to the wave, but also the the smooth smoothness as well, and 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 subtlety. Um, I like that, yeah. And I really like I kind of like the purple kind of shade on the on this side where where my finger's pointing. I really like this strip here. And I yeah. like the font as well. The gold font of kitchens is really nice. Yeah. And and I like how it's rising above a mountain. I mean, that really displays the power of the tidal wave and I guess it's like um symbolizing that um sort of like nothing's impossible like you can climb any over any mountain so it's about like over overcoming struggles i think this album and yeah yeah 
yeah, that could be symbolizing that, you know, about the, the music overpowering big obstacles. So, yeah. Maybe. I can definitely hear that quality in their music, too. I think the thing with Kitchens of Distinction, I think you're right, are definitely one of the most underrated groups in the scene. Um, I know yeah. my favorite song by them, it's not on that album, but it's the third time we opened the capsule. Hmm. And but it has but I think they have a way of you're right, sounding really uplifting. You know, while I think people often use the word melancholic to describe a lot of shoegaze bands, you know, like um, I think Kitchens of Distinction creates a sound that, like you said, is very uplifting, um, harsh at times, but um, they really don't get enough credit. You're right, um, especially for being one of the first ones out there, because I think uh, their debut was like in 89. So they're really um, I think they were really one of the first to do it and uh, deserve to be recognized for that. Yeah, for sure, man. And like yeah. the first track, Railway, is incredible. Yeah, Drive That Fast is another uh, is another favorite. Um, yeah, I mean they're they're two essential shoegaze classics, I think. But Railway and Drive That Fast, and then on their um, third album, uh, De the the Death of Cool, that's another that's another must have. You got to own that one, I think. The Death of Cool with. Uh, you got blue pedal on it and um gone world gone are two highlights from their third album mm. yeah yeah just highly recommend all of their stuff and like you said third time we opened the ca capsule that was an that was another uh, striking moment for me hearing yeah. that just yeah, i like the way it bursts open you know so everything wins it's just like <laughs> ascends, oh, doesn't it so awesome and i don't yeah. know if you've seen the music video to it too but they're like in the water yeah. and on the beach it's really cool yeah, um I've seen that. yeah i i would say sorry this is a bit off topic but i just want to say i think the other really underrated shoegaze band from that same era is ar kane um i yeah. think they yeah they're not in, in my top 10 list but i absolutely love their music but <laughs> so i just wanted to say that um yeah definitely. anyway all right yeah, six, so six, sixty nine album, I think, isn't it? It's called. Yeah, I don't know if. Yeah, oh, I, that's one of my favorite yeah, shoegaze definitely albums. Definitely one of one of the pioneers, and I think probably even more important than than, than the Jesus and Mary Chain. I would say Ar Kane are probably as important as the Cocteau Twins. I think in the formation of the genre. Yeah, I could see that because I think the G yeah. Jesus and Mary Chain were just a bit too sort of punky and. Like nothing but you know bare bones kind of punky i think like after psycho candy especially i just think they yeah went to, they went to kind of meat and potatoes rock and roll i think well yeah i do notice with um uh uh crap dark lens their second album um that's much, their second album right yeah it's much more yeah. norm, normal sounding isn't it yeah and there isn't as much feedback um yeah. yeah so yeah i do think ar kane they were one of the first maybe the first honestly but yeah, yeah. anyway yeah <laughs> yeah your turn now it's your pick uh number six yeah. i think we're at yeah silverson pickups carnivas hope i'm saying that right but this album it has a special place in my heart because um the first shoegaze song i can recall hearing is a uh, lazy eye by the silverson pickups yeah. <laughs> um yeah, yeah i had a guitar hero world tour for me yeah That's where I yeah had it. <laughs> yeah, I think we're, we're, yeah, that's that's because we're from the same generation, so that that yeah. kind of makes sense. Yeah, us uh, '90s yeah. kids, right? Yeah, well, two thousand no two thousands kids. Well, like, oh yeah, born in I the mean, 90s. I was born in the '90s, so I kind of Same say here. I'm more of a two thousands kids. I'm yeah, more, you're right. Yeah, yeah, because that's what like, we, we that's what we remember. Yeah, but yeah, I don't, that's I don't true. really remember the '90s. Yeah. A little too young to remember the first wave of shoegaze, I suppose. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, I remember uh, being. I won't. I won't talk for too long about this. But I remember I was like ten. It was like two thousand eight. Um, I had Guitar Hero World Tour, and you know I liked a lot of the heavier like metal songs, like Ozzy Osbourne, that kind of stuff. But then I heard Silverson Pickups, Lazy Eye, and I played that song. And I and I remember about three minutes in, there's just this long wall of sound, like guitar solo and i was like what the hell is this this is the coolest thing i ever heard and uh so that was my first um 
that was my first introduction to shoegaze. So um, anyway, but I, I love the album too, even though I've heard so many shoegaze albums since then. I think the album is still, the cover at least, is still one of my top 10 favorites because I just love the way it glows. Again, it's almost like you can see these little white embers that are moving. I just look at it and see movement. And um, I just think there's such a beauty to that. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, really great album. Um, I, I must say something, Matt. Um, I've only got about nine minutes left on this Zoom call. Um, Has it been 40 minutes already? Wow. Well, yeah, 30 minutes. But um, I've, I've only got the um, basic version, not not the, the pro, unfortunately. So I may oh, have to... Yeah, I may have to just start start this again. And if I send you another um, invite, then we could do like a part two. Sure. And then maybe yeah. in post edit, we can combine it together. Oh, yeah, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I can get as much done as possible. So next one, close down, near field. And I recently only got into this album, found out about it probably a year, a year and a half ago, something like that. 2022 23 and honestly it's it's amazing and like i said it's in the slow dive vein where it's like that ethereal yamaha x x fx 500 units the soft focus kind of sound that yeah. kind of happens throughout the whole album um really great stuff bumblebee aquila sun angel summer a song called mouth which is really good but it's weird because it's not just songs. It's also like ambient experiments and like jungle noises, like like field recording kind of experimentations where they've got like jungle noises with like birds tweeting. And, and then there's like one song, which is like vocals that have been like delayed over and over again, like a, like a robot. Ooh. So it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's like slow dive kind of songs, but like mixed with, like experimentation, just general like sound experimentation, with like synthesi huh. with like synthesizers and uh, voices being delayed, and some of it can it's a bit smooth like spooky sounding at, at sometimes. And, check it out; that's really yeah. cool. I yeah, haven't heard that one. Some, some, some kind of spacey kind of uh, sounds as well going on. So th this one's from 1994, um, San Francisco, Californian band. So definitely one of the earliest um, American acts. Right so, on. Which is uh, super interesting. Yeah. yeah. And they, they continue the theme on the back. Yeah, so it's got a real mysterious pattern. I, re I like the swirl of the artwork. I really like the swirl in the middle. There's like this swirly like puddle, like the outline of a puddle kind of thing. Yeah, it's really pretty. I like and that. Then, like neon neon green lights or something but yeah i love the color like the green and blue together like tur turquoise i would say it's a yeah. turquoise kind of color that's one of my yeah. favorite colors turquoise i uh i see why you picked that one that's one i'm not familiar with but um yeah it almost it's, it's almost like a close-up of like a pine tree or like some sort of I don't know, plant or something. So it's uh that's really pretty. Yeah. Cool. All right. It's your turn. All right. So number five, sweet trip, velocity design comfort. Um, yeah, so for those who don't know, Sweet Trip, um, they were a band, they are from San Francisco, another California band, uh that uh yeah, they released a number of albums, uh that are kind of fuse electronic music with shoegaze or sort of techno-y music. And uh, this album, when it was released in uh, the early 2000s, uh, was just kind of faded into irrelevancy, but just through word of mouth online, it spread. And uh, yeah. And uh, it's not, it's, some people might not even call it necessarily shoegaze. I don't know. I guess you're kind of stretching the term a little bit for it, but I had to include it because I just love the cover. Um, yeah, it's this weird, I guess you could see this weird techno-y, I don't know. And uh it's it's uh inspired off of um or it took inspiration from a group, um, or not a group, I'm sorry, a building up in Canada that's like really 
cubic like that. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, great, great choice. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think I've listened to their stuff sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But I need to give them I need to be a bit more familiar probably. Yeah. Um anyway, I'll move on to my uh number five, is it? Yep. And uh this is Ringo Desta. One oh, of the yeah. one of the big uh two thousands, two thousand and tens giants. And this is their two thousand and eleven album, Color Trip. Right on. And I just love the uh, the jazz master in the air. I think that Alex Gehring is uh, holding up, and Elliot Fraser there in the corner. Oh, that's and really cool. I just think, yeah, the sun shining like that down on the band members and the guitar is just really awesome. And I guess it it shows that uh, there's like a summery vibe as well in, in yeah. the sound. Um. I mean, yeah. I mean, what else can you say? I mean, I really like the font as well. Like the pink font is really cool. Like something a bit different. Oh yeah, me quite, too. Quite hard to see, I think. Um, but I think maybe that's intentional. The way that it's kind of faded and hard to read because it represents the kind of the quiet vocals in shoegaze. I think. Yeah. So it's just saying that. It wants to be obscured on purpose, like like the Loveless album cover, which I'm going to have to put as an honorable mention, I think, the Loveless album cover. If not, we're going to get some unsubscriptions and, and dislikes, I think. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loveless wasn't even in, it wasn't in our lists, but I think we're going to have to include it at the end just to satisfy the purists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to have, yeah, you'll have to have Suvlaki too, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, where it's it's not about the music itself; it's about the covers, and at least in this instance. So, <laughs> yeah, but lots of people see the Loveless album cover as like the the symbol, don't they? Yeah, they it is kind of as, like, like, like 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 the thumbnail of the genre. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I kind of tried to be a little contrarian by not picking it, um, but it's definitely iconic, and that's for sure. Um. I guess, yeah, with Loveless, you know, I think you and I both have just seen it so many times yeah. that maybe it doesn't, we don't even think to include it, you know, or, or I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, you could be right there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How are we doing on time? You think I have time to fit uh, in one more? Yeah, we've got two minutes. So, yeah, just one more, I think. Okay. So, number four, Love's Lies Crushing, Girl Echo Sun's Veils. So, this one is a bird, not a cat this time, but a bird, and... um. Yeah, it's like mid-flight. Um, looks like the way I see it, it's like flying into a portal. Um, and I don't know. Love's Lies Crushings is one of those bands with uh, Scott Cortez and Melissa Arpin Dwimstra. They've been around for like 30 years and they've released probably 10, 11 albums. Um, they're a bit polarizing, I think, in the sense that I think when people hear their music, they're either hit with a huge, they're hit with a huge wave of sound. People either love that or it just doesn't do anything for them. But um, for me, they're one of my favorite bands. I absolutely love Love's Lies Crushings. And uh, it's my favorite album cover by them. One of my favorite albums by them, too. Awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, Love Lies Crushing is not really for the faint-hearted. It's not, for the, it's not really for the beginners that are coming into the genre because it really is. It's kind of like shoegaze, the, 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 upper, the upper echelons of the spectrum of how yeah. how insane it can be the noise and scott cortez is a legend because he's uh he was in astro bright as well he that yep. was his that was another project astro bright and you know that stuff as well is is really great and he was also a member of resplandor as well which is the band i'm going to talk about in a minute cool uh, but yeah i think we're going to have to just um if i send you another link Nathaniel, um, if I end this meeting and then I send you another link and then you just go to your emails and accept it, I think that's the best way to do this. We just do a part two and then you can join the two together if you want in post-editing. Sure. Right. Yeah, 